Dear fellow Toastmasters, my name is Onjiro Kaburu from Kilele Toastmasters Club in Nyeri, central part of Kenya, and the Dojo Toastmasters Club, which is a club targeting the tech people and people in science and technology to support and help them hone their communication and leadership skills, as is the call of Toastmasters International. For my distinguished Toastmasters projects, I looked around and something kept knocking at my door, my heart door, if you may. I had some challenge understanding the DTM award process, the journey, what does it take? And in my observation as a leader at club level or district level interacting with mentees, it came to my understanding that a lot of us, a lot of members do not quite understand the process of becoming a distinguished Toastmaster. So given that the main objective of a distinguished Toastmaster is to add value to, to an organization or rather do or carry out a project that adds value to an organization, I wondered why not start at home? I therefore settled for, for a project that I call demystifying DTM. In the process of the mystifying DTM, I then decided to hold various interviews on the various requirements of the Distinguished Toastmaster Award, sit down with those who have gone before us and try to understand those requirements by them sharing their knowledge, their experience, and the growth and benefits that they have had along the journey. Because truth be told, it's not just about becoming a distinguished Toastmaster by name, but also by quality, by doing what is seen and observed in us as Toastmaster. Now, I'm making this video to welcome you to a series of interviews, four interviews, all covering the various aspects or requirements of Toastmasters International for one to become a distinguished Toastmaster. Before you go to the, to the interviews, I would like to just give a summary of these requirements and then let you feed from the knowledge of the various interviewees that sat on the platforms or rather the panel to share their knowledge and experience and the benefits that they garnered from going through the process. First of all, for you to be able to become a distinguished Toastmaster, you need to have served as a club officer for at least one year and as a district officer for at least one year. That is 12 months, 12 months. In addition, you need in the current times where we are using the Pathways Learning Experience to have finished at least two paths, finish one path and then another one. But these days you can actually do two paths concurrently. After you achieve that, scratch that, not after, because these other projects are things you can also do while you're pursuing your pathways, your pathways and also leadership at club or district level. And these are the elect electives. You can choose to either be a mentor or a coach of a club or be a club sponsor, run a speech craft, or a youth leadership program. If you're hearing about all these things for the first time, I hope you're excited to click onto the specific interviews through videos that are forming part of this series of demystifying DTM. After you do that, you are required to do what I am doing. Think about and execute what they call a DTM project, whose main objective is a project that adds value to an organization. And could be, you could look at an organization in entirety or individuals or members of this organization. And that's the main base for qualification of a DTM project. There is a wall 
interview on a DTM project. So again, I hope you are going to watch that video so that you get to understand more what you need to look out for, what can inform your decision on a certain project to settle on knowledge shared by DTM, Distinguished Toastmasters from District 114, who have gone before us. Now, packaging all that, we have leadership requirements, we have education requirements, we have the elect electives, and then we have the distinguished toast master projects. At the end of this video, you will see a graphical representation of these requirements. And having a graphical representation on your mind, I'm hoping you are able to go to make a plan to get to understand every requirement and more so by watching the videos that are forming part of this series, you are going to get deeper understanding of every requirement and also be encouraged by the growth and benefits that come with it. Because as I said in the beginning, it's not about becoming a distinguished Toastmaster. As my former district director, District 114, Harry Karanja DTM, like to put it, DTM can also be do the most. So choose to become a DTM by doing the most because it's by doing the most that you learn, that you grow, that you actually become the leader that Toastmaster strives to make. It is my hope that you learn from these experiences of the interviewees, that you learn and grow for your own sake the sake of the members of your club, the sake of your friends, because we say the skills in Toastmasters are transferable. So may these also grow you at professional level. It is my hope that you are going not to just learn, but also have fun in the process. As my mantra, the mantra of my first club, Kilele Toastmasters is, it is only in Toastmasters where learning and having fun are not mutually exclusive. So may you learn as much as possible through these videos, through every activity you choose to take or you are encouraged to take after watching these videos. And may you not just learn and grow, but have fun in the process. I wish you the best in your Toastmasters journey and also as you get to your distinguished Toastmaster level. Cheers. <music>